What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's up, everybody? What's up? Welcome back to my channel. Y'all already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday, girl. What? Real Talk Wednesday. Get your wine, get your drink, get your water, get something, girl, and sit back and enjoy the chat. I hope y'all all are having like a really great day when you're watching this because, girl, what? Today is Wednesday when y'all are watching this. Of course, it's actually Monday, but we we prepare. We, girl, we come through, prepare. Y'all already know what time it is. Today is the day. Now, I really wanted to have like these big balloons behind me, but girl, today is the day when it is my B day. Okay, so today is my birthday, June the 19th. And today, look, I am not scared to share my age. Girl, today I turned 50 years old. Okay, what, what, what? Okay, 50 years old today. You know what I'm saying? Today is my B day. What, what? It's my B day. Do it like it's your B day, baby. Do it like you born to slay, baby. What's up, you guys? I'm happy to spend this day with you guys doing real talk. I hope you all are having like a really great day when y'all are watching this. May it be the day of real talk, the next day, the morning, the evening, the afternoon, late at night. Whenever you're watching this, I hope you all are having like a really, really great day, okay? Because today is my B day. And who would I rather spend it with but with you guys? You know, I get prepared, okay? So, yes, you guys came through trying to look cute you know put on a little shorty do it is what it is okay and let me say this I don't really wear the color red much but y'all see me last week when I had on red for my real talk okay now today I have on another red like I don't really have a lot of red clothes but I do like the color red a lot like it just goes well with I think any skin complexion like red goes so well with any skin complexion you know there are so many different variations of iteration how have you said it okay of red and I just think it goes well with any skin tone you just got to find the right red, especially when it comes to lipstick. And I have not found the right red, nor can I put lipstick that's red on really, really great. So yeah, girl. Okay. So I hope y'all all having like a really great day. You know, your girl, a, eh? okay. So girl, listen, we are definitely going to talk about this Bob, but, um, first I want to say thank you to everybody who wished my son was who passed away. Nothing but rest in peace in heaven. Birthday wishes, love showed all the love and support in the comments on my social media. Like I want to say thank Thank you to everybody for wishing him a amazing beautiful birthday and that particular day we did have a really great day we sent off some balloons uh tati bought a cake from one of my favorite cake places which is called nothing bunt cakes they really are good cakes and they have like the best cream cheese frosting like oh my god they have the best cream cheese frosting like i could just eat that all day the cream cheese frosting it's so good okay so she got a red velvet cake and we put the number 26 on it we sang happy birthday we allowed the balloons to go up we had like a really really great afternoon for Wuzzle's birthday so that's what we did on that particular day I didn't really do too much you know I think I did edit a video of that day but you know I just try to be peaceful I just try to be peaceful no huge celebration and you know just try to be peaceful so I thank you all for all the love and well wishes on my son's birthday yes you guys he would have been 26 so I do thank you all so today you know girl look <laughs> your girl's 50 and um Today on my birthday, I'm going to relax. Me and Tati are going to go get our feet done today, which is cool. Um, I, I don't know about the fingernails anymore. Like I do love nails, but I just be having so much shit to do. You know what I'm saying? From doing my wigs and it does take a lot of work to get used to, okay? When you have nails, like fingernails, press-ons, whatever you want to call them, it takes work to get used to, especially if you're using your hands a lot. I think everybody uses their hands on a normal day basis, okay? Like we really do need them. So it's hard for me, it's not really hard, but you know, I do have to get used to it. I got to get used to tapping on the keyboard. You know what I'm saying? I got to get used to applying the lace front wigs. I got to get used to buttoning. It's just a lot to get used to making my bracelets. So I just feel like for me, I would rather just have something where I could just pop them on and off if I really felt the need to put on fingernails. Now, you know, a couple years ago, I was all into it. Like, girl, listen, I think I wore those fingernails for like a year. You know, I kept getting them done every two weeks and I did get used to it. And I felt really, really like, I don't know. I can't say fancy, but maybe like, um maybe fancy i don't know i just felt so i don't know i don't know but i i really did enjoy them but once you take them off and you go back to just regular living girl it's like i don't like i don't really care about getting my fingernails done now for my feet i mean they're cool too i mean i as long as they look nice and neat and and well moisturized then i'm not like going crazy if if i have no nail polish on them but my toenails are nicely kept and nicely moisturized and stuff my feet look good without polish then i'm fine but okay i'm gonna go and i'm gonna get my feet done with tati so we're gonna have a great day then we're gonna come home we're gonna cook i'm gonna make my spare rib she's gonna make 
make some baked macaroni and cheese, which I love of hers. And we're gonna invite my daughter-in-law over and my two grandsons that she has because the other two are in Georgia. So yes, we're gonna invite them over. And I just felt like, you know what? I'd rather just be in the house versus going out to eat, which we did plan to do. But it's just a lot easier when you have two little young ones versus it being in the home. So we're gonna invite her over, Tati and me and Sharina and the two younger ones and her two kids will have dinner while Mumsy and they go to Meg The Stallion's concert, which was my birthday concert tickets, but girl, listen, we are gonna see Chris Brown instead, me and Tati. So I'm excited about that because I really do like Chris Brown. August 4th, he will be here, okay, in Phoenix. And August 4th is also the day, which will be five years that my son passed away. And he did also like Chris Brown too. He loved his dance. He loved his, 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 um, his drip. You know, I felt like that would be cool i really do like chris brown so i will really enjoy that a lot more than meg the stallion so we're gonna do that i'm enjoying my day i'm i'm just blessed to be here for another day what more can i say okay girl what more can i say but yeah so my grandsons will be over the baby baby girl when i tell you he has gotten so brown he is browning like a little turkey in the oven he has his own little expressions sometimes he look like he having an attitude but i tell my daughter-in-law that's because he's probably like sitting there looking at you like not this again she gonna start snapping pictures not this again He's such a cutie. He's such a cutie. They grow so quick. They grow super duper quick. So I'm going to enjoy my birthday with my grandkids. At least four out of six. You know what I'm saying? And um, I did go and return my skirt to Target. I think I spoke about that. And you know what? I love Target, but sometimes it can be so challenging for me to find what I've been looking for. So I did go there looking for one particular collection. I cannot remember the young lady's last name and I don't even know if I'm saying her first name correctly, but of course she is one of us African-Americans and I think her name was Janae something. Well, she had this collection and girl, when I went to Target the other day, it looked like they never had it there. There wasn't not one sign, not an inkling of, a, of, of an outfit, nothing. So I'm like, did I miss this collection? Did it just sell out that quick at this particular Target? I was able to find something else to exchange. Of course, I did have to pay a little bit extra money, but I really do actually like this. Now, first of all, let me just tell y'all this. I am not a jumpsuit romper type of person. I do not like one pieces, okay? And I'm just gonna be honest and say this because I feel like it just depends on the one piece for one. If it's something that you could just easily take off, and just pull down like the fabric is like a jersey knit, then I might be with it. You understand what I'm saying? So that way I can go to the bathroom. But when you have to wear a romper, one piece with a body shaper, girl, that's a lot of work. Now, God forbid you have to use the bathroom. I think that's the day where I'll be dehydrated and I won't drink shit. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not really like a romper girl, but let me tell you, I was there by myself. It took me like a little bit over an hour to find something that was like acceptable. There wasn't a lot of things that I was really into. There was a lot of acid wash and a lot of like 90s clothes and there wasn't anything you know it 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 was kind of hard because you wanted to fit your body frame properly you know what i'm saying and plus it's super hot out here you're not gonna see me wearing denim and when i do wear denim honey it has to have some stretch to it if it's stiff denim i'm not wearing it if it has no stretch to it and it's thick denim girl i am not wearing it okay so it took me like a few minutes well excuse me it took me a, a while an hour, over an hour to find like something that i was really interested in and it just so happened to be a romper really really cute romper it was two left one in an xl and one in a 2x girl i was like okay this must be my calling because this is my size so i took the 2x and i went in the try the fitting room and i tried it on now i don't really know where i'm gonna wear this to then i decided um today well not today but yesterday or a couple days ago oh i'm gonna wear it to the chris brown concert i've already had purchased it but Tati had told me like the next day so i have a place to wear it to i don't know if you want to say it's too dressy or I don't know, but it's a really nice romper. I really do like it. I like the fit of it. I love the material of it. I love the whole fact that it just makes me feel like, okay, girl, you got this. There are some rompers that I just really don't care for because when you have like a midsection that you're really not happy about, sometimes the rompers don't look too great, especially if they have like the elastic. So I really do like this romper. It was the last one in my size. It must have been my calling. So girl, I got it. Y'all let me know. Let me know what you think of this romper. Last one. I think the brand is called A New Day. Really really nice so you know what let me girl i don't know i'm aware somewhere i'm aware somewhere so that's what i did um i don't know what happened to the other collection girl i don't know if it ever came to this target or what have you, you know it all depends on the region but it didn't look like it ever came to this particular target especially when they have these new collections at target they always put them at this particular target they always have them right in the front there's a spotlight for them and that spotlight was taken up by swimsuits and those swimsuits actually were there like a couple of weeks ago so i really don't think this collection ever came to this particular target tried to find them online was nothing left girl so i mean it is what it is so anyway also this 
weekend was really easy for me. I decided that I wasn't going to do shit like always. And you, girl, let me tell y'all, okay? First of all, you know, it's Monday, my drink Monday, okay? Let me tell y'all, I'm really getting into not doing shit on the weekends. Like, when I tell you I make it my business now to not do anything, like I don't put on no lashes, I will come downstairs, I will brush my teeth when I wake up, you know, I'll wash my face, moisturize, put my hyaluronic serum on, you know, brush my hair in a very, very loose bun or a ponytail, whatever you want to call it, with my little bald headed short hair, make my bed, make sure my room looks neat, and you know, then I go downstairs, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll speak to my family, and then I'll go sit my ass in my living room, I'll turn on my TV, and I will get my little jewelry making tools and accessories out and I made it my business to do this every weekend like I love sitting there and doing nothing now when I tell you this is something that I have dreamed of for the longest but I just always ended up doing videos girl no more and so this Saturday and Sunday well this Sunday actually I did do some beads on Saturday me and my granddaughter was chilling together for a lot of the day to my grandson he went and got his hair retwisted and me and Tato was just chilling you know what I'm saying as long as you give her a phone she will sit on YouTube kids and mind her business okay she does have a tablet but she prefers the phone so I just gave her my phone she sat on YouTube kids and minded her business um on Sunday I decided I want to do something different I want to try to make some different type of bracelets not just beaded bracelets but also charm bracelets and I have when I say I have a lot of inventory from beads to charms to the bracelets to the I have a lot now this is nothing new for me when I say this is nothing new for me prior to moving here I used to make earrings so I already had beads and stuff so this weekend I did some charm bracelets some people call them junk charm bracelets I don't know what you want to call them but girl yes I have not taken the pictures yet so for those of you who are looking for charm junk bracelets please give me a couple of weeks to list them they will be on the website soon but yes so I may I was making these and hopefully you guys can see them um um, these, this one is, these are on a link chain, you know what I'm saying? And these are, these are for adults too, because, uh, women of my stature, adults like to wear these. So this is just all about the snacks and sweets. I mean, you could probably, you could definitely put it on a teenage girl if you wanted to, because, you know, they have links where you can move over the class. So I made these, and then I also made some luxury ones okay some luxury ones for those who want to be grown and sexy luxurious or what have you yeah so i don't know i'm into red and i know I, there are a lot of people that are into red so i'm calling these my asmr bracelets because they jingling baby or maybe i'll call them that i don't really know but okay so can you guys see it are my luxury bracelets and they consist of luxury charms we got a Prada bag we got a Chanel heart right here shoes we have a diamond encrusted purse we have a Christian Dior sign we have an Louis Vuitton charm we have a Fendi charm we have our sister charms we have charms we have Africa charms okay we have heart charms we have we have our heart charm we have the um, what is this one called with the eye you guys know what I'm talking about the eye thing we have that so these are our my uh, luxury charms charms bracelet I made one in red also in pink so for those who just want a charm bracelet and not beat it, I've also been making these. So for the pink one, we have a Chanel. We have a Chanel. We have a crystal. We have a purse. We have a breast cancer awareness lady and lady. We have a Gucci heart. We have a pink butterfly. We have a Chanel diamond encrusted charm, a gold bee, a, Chan a Gucci purse, um, some rhinestones, rhinestones, a Louis Vuitton padlock, a Dior tag, a pink diva shoe, okay, a uh, Care Bear, pink Care Bear, a diamond encrusted Chanel charm, and a Gucci charm, and a young lady charm. So I got in pink, okay. Also, the last one that I made was in blue. Um, of course, I'm going to be making more, but this is what I just tried out yesterday. It was like at the end of the night, um, and I really wanted to use up all the charms that I have. Like, when I say I buy shit, I buy stuff, and then when I buy it, sometimes I think I overdo. 20 charms on each bracelet, okay? So we have Gucci right here. We have a gold butterfly. We have a rhinestone heart. We have a Gucci right here. We have a blue rhinestone that spells out love, a... B, a blue a gold B, a blue rhinestone heart, a flower, a Prada bag, okay, sunflower. We have a pair of Nikes, okay. Of this, I don't know what this is, but okay. We have Christian Dior. We have some blue headband. We have a puzzle piece. We have a blue heart. We have Chanel. 
um, and a girl and a blue butterfly. So this is what I did over the weekend, and I'm really actually loving these, okay? They came out really, really cute. Now I gotta figure out how I'm gonna take the picture, okay? Yes, girl, that's what I'm gonna figure out next. But that's what I did for the weekend, so I will have those up soon, along with my other new collection that I have been working on, which is not a 10 stack of bracelets like I've been making, or eight stacks, but for those who like four and five stacks, so this is a 10 stack, these are eight millimeters. I also do have bigger beads, but I've been working on some that are not as beaded, or excuse me, yeah, not as stacked. So four and five stack rates, this is what I've been working on. Of course, the price will be lower. So I just gotta take a picture of those. I got lots of them that I've already made. I just gotta take pictures of them. And that's like the hard part of it is taking pictures. Like you wanna have the right lighting and the right photo. So, you know what I'm saying? I have to do that. I think that's what I loathe. I loathe doing that. But other than that, yes, you guys. So, you know, I did do some makeup today. I had a short video that I have to edit. I got some new products from She Glam. This is their new, um, foundation stick foundation it's supposed to be high coverage foundation stick so that is what's on my face today um it also came with a brush which i really wasn't a huge fan of the brush um only because it was just the way you would hold it so i wasn't really a huge fan of the actual brush but i like the fact that the foundation i like using cream stick foundation on my under eye um as concealer only because when you are at a certain age it's best to well that's what i see um Cream concealer is really great for people that are older. So it just doesn't, girl, I don't know, but that's what I've seen and it does actually work better. But so they sent me three colors and I really do actually like it. Um, as far as a foundation on my face, I'm not like a huge person, a fan of stick cream foundation on my face. I just prefer it as a concealer. I just like to have like liquid foundation on my face because it's just easier to, you know, spread out. But it, I mean, it worked out okay. Not with the actual brush that it came with, I used to have to use my own brush, but you know, I do like the colors. They're really rich and I did choose a couple other colors. So I will definitely get that video out. So anyway, you guys, let's get into our sponsored video. So that way we can get into this real talk and I don't hold y'all for too long. So girl, today's sponsor is Floor Year Hair. Now I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, but I think it's called Flow Year, Flow Year Hair, 100% HD lace human hair. This is available on Amazon, girl. Y'all know what I say about Amazon, Amazon Prime. Prime, get your shit on time. So this wig actually came amazing out of the box, straight out the box. I was able to put this wig on without having to do much of anything but cutting the lace and just reparting it because I'm not like a huge fan of repart of a middle part. You already know that. This is a 10 inch human hair, 13 by four HD lace. Now girl, I really think this is a Swiss lace. If y'all can see, y'all can tell the lace is melty, baby. It lace is definitely melting on this unit. Straight pre everything out of the unit, pre-plucked for you, pre-bleached for you, pre-styled for you, and pre-approved baby for you. The only thing that you would definitely need to do for this particular wig is remove the lace, cut the lace. It has an elastic band with it, and it does come with some really great amenities, which are two, which is the melting band that you would need to put on when you're styling your unit, and an HD wig cap. Now inside of it, it also does come with a black adjustable elastic band, which is removable. It does have the silicone on the opposite side. Now the one thing, like listen, y'all know I'm not really like a huge middle part bob wear, but this one was super easy to repart. I do like the fact that there was nothing that needed to be done with this. And I think this wig looks pretty damn cute, okay? Yes, yeah, very affordable. You can get this in 8, 10, 12, and 14 inches on Amazon. Look at the actual lace on this. But when I did receive the unit, I really didn't think that I was going to be able to just put it on. I honestly felt that I had to bleach it and pre-style it. To my surprise, it came already done for you. And who don't love an easy wig? So if you are a novice and or you, you know a beginner, you really don't know too much about plucking or bleaching the unit and you want something that's short for the summertime then you're definitely going to have to check out flow year on amazon what i tell you about amazon amazon prime get your on time girl I love Amazon. They have so many different units to choose from. Amazon is one where it's very easy to return something, but also it's really hard sometimes to find the perfect unit because the pictures are being misleading. Say that this is one of the good vendors on Amazon. Affordable unit already done for you. And who don't like a good everything is done for you? 100% human hair straight, lace front bob, 13 by four, and you get plenty of parting. I did have to customize the size just a tad bit, but girl, listen, no baby hairs at all. Look at this melt girl look at this melt like I'm saying what 
Look at this melt. This melt was easy. Of course, I did use my favorite hairspray, which is the Aussie. I did put three layers of that on and just put the wig on. But I really feel like this is a good unit. So if you are looking for a bob lace front on Amazon, then definitely you want to check out this brand right here, which is Floor Year. They have some really nice units, and there are others to choose from. And like I said, if you want, it, it, they do come in eight. 10, 12, and 14 inches. And the price is really, really, you know what I'm saying, competitive. I think the price is affordable. I think when you go too cheap in price, the girl, this is when you're gonna have to do some things to the wig. But the wig came already pre-styled, pre-bleached, pre-plucked, okay? All you had to do is cut the lace off and just customize it to your hair. I went ahead and used my wax stick and just reparted it. But I do like it. It's very smooth. It's very flowy. I love the fact that it was already styled for you because I'm really not that great at doing bobs, you know what I'm saying, like curling bobs or cutting them. Or So I love the fact that it was already done. But I also really do like the fact that the hairline looks super duper natural on this unit. You know what I'm saying? For those bob girls, check out Floor Year. I hope I'm pronouncing their name properly. I will definitely link all the information down below for you girls. And y'all let me know what you think of this unit right here. So, so we're going to get into this real talk y'all already know what to do it's real talk wednesday so if you have a real talk that you would like me to talk about go ahead and send me an email to muffin is my lovers 2012 at gmail.com or april's real talk at gmail.com please make sure to put in the subject line real talk if you want me to change the name of those people that you're speaking of please let me know so or if you choose to do so you can go ahead and do that in your email but other than that girl let's get on to this real talk okay y'all let's get into this one this one is titled complain complain so girl okay so let's see hey april hey divas and divas i hope all are having a beautiful real talk wednesday april you can call me penguin because that is what my family and friends closest to me call me it's a childhood nickname given by my mother because i needed braces on my legs to straighten them out so they called me penguin because i waddled lol so April, I have this one friend who I care for dearly, a childhood friend. When I say a childhood friend, we've been friends for over 40 something years. And when I tell you she's like a sister to me, she is a sister to me. I love Simone. We have went through so many life changes together. She is like my other half. So here's the tea, and I pray she doesn't see this video, but I need to ask for your opinion on how to speak with her. Simone is a constant complainer. She complains about finances, about men, about food, about her weight, about her looks, about her family, her other friends. When I tell you all she does is complain, that is all she does. And it is literally draining to me now. I have tried to help her find a job, but she refuses to look for work. She thinks posting TikTok random videos is going to have her become famous. When I say I have tried to help her find a job, meaning I have filled out the applications for her and out of five interviews that she got due to my resume made for her and applications filled out for her she only went to one of the interviews and when they offered her the job she complained the pay wasn't enough and refused to accept the job the other four jobs she was asked to interview for she didn't even reply back to them as i suggested but yet she sits on her ass and says she's broke etc etc but won't accept any job or look for any job she complains about her daughter's father. Her daughter is 15 and her father and Simone haven't been together in years, but yet she sleeps with him and then gets upset when he doesn't provide, which he hasn't since that young lady was about two or three years old. I don't understand how she can sleep with him. They are not together. And like I said, he doesn't provide and hasn't in so many years. Then there is the part she complains about her family, how they don't want to help her with her bills or help her out in general, stating things such as what type of family are they if they aren't willing to help out. Mother is tired of her lazy ways along with so many other family members. She gets welfare such as food stamps and lives in public housing. So she feels as if she has got it made, I guess. 
She complains about her looks, such as her weight. But how can you complain when all you eat is sweet cakes, soda, nothing healthy, and barely wants to go out and exercise or walks with me when I invite her? I'm drained. With all the negative complaining, not saying my life, not saying my life is a bed of roses, but what do you expect when you're not doing anything about it? I have helped her out with money plenty of times, not expecting any payback because that's my girl. I will do anything for her, but I can't do this any longer. I too live on a fixed income. I work as a manager at Walmart and have been working for Walmart for 15 years now. Not saying I'm rolling in the cash, but I have managed to save and purchase me a little starter home, but still I'm living paycheck to paycheck. What would you do if this was someone you truly cared for? Thank you so much, Penguin. Okay, girl. So, Peng, that's cute. I like it, Penguin. I like the nickname Penguin. Um, so they've been friends. Penguin and Simone been friends for over 40 years. So she said they childhood friends. They are really childhood friends. I'm not really sure what the age are, what the age group is, but they have been friends for over 40 years. And 40 years is a long ass time. Okay. I'm just saying over 40 years, it's a long ass time. So they, they friends, friends, but here's the thing. Simone is just lazy. She just complained a lot. You can't really complain if you don't do anything about it. You know what I'm saying? So she complained about her money. She complained about no job. She complained about her family. She complained about her looks. She complained about her weight. What men, she complained about her baby father, but yet she's still sleeping him listen let me tell something let me tell you something who the fuck is going around filling out a job application and resume for a grown ass person okay so we got penguin and we already know they're over 40 because they've been friends for over 40 years um we got penguin who's been filling out job applications and resumes for simone now i don't know about you but I'm not about to be filling out nobody's job application. I'm damn sure not going to be filling out no resumes. I'm not going to put together an interview for you. I think like at a certain age, honey, you need to grow up and figure things out for yourself. Yes, everybody complains about shit. I'll be the first to complain about some shit to you. Y'all have heard me complain about things to you guys. I've complained about my body, my stomach area. Now, granted, I do try. I do try. I probably can't go much harder than what I do, okay? And not just me being honest, but yeah, I do try. I could probably go harder at what I do. I do try to lose the weight. I do eat healthy. Sometimes I might have a setback and want something sweet, but I'm human. But you cannot not complain if you're not doing anything about it who don't want their finances to be in order okay everybody wants their finances to be in order but here's the thing when you over a certain age honey you need to be filling out your own job applications and if it's draining then it's motherfucking draining now i don't know about you but i don't really like to sit around somebody who's a negative nancy who always likes to complain and just <sighs> girl listen okay you know what i'm gonna just say this i've already dealt with that shit okay i don't I understand everybody has hardships. Everybody have a hardship in life. It don't always have to be financial. It could be mental. It could be family. It could be just a hardship, okay? We don't know what people go through in life. But sometimes people do take it to the extreme. And sometimes that hardship is made self a self-inflicted hardship okay not something that someone has done to you but a self-inflicted hardship when i say self-inflicted meaning you put yourself there okay you put yourself in that category now true indeed i don't really like to be around somebody who does nothing but non-stop complaining now here's me this is this is my thing now everybody's money situation is different it is what it is my bank account may not be like your bank account but that's my motherfucking business okay that's that is what it is now i had a friend and we already know it was my ex-friend Okay, just reset. We was out once. We were out once and we were sitting close by one another. We were sitting next to each other. And this is me. When I'm at a bar, they like to keep your credit card, okay? as a, to keep your tab open i'm not really with that shit because i don't i don't trust people i don't trust people with my money i don't trust people with none of that shit especially when i have had people try to steal my money from my accounts you know what i'm saying you go to these gas stations and use your car to pay for gas they have these things that were screwing your credit cards and girl listen i have woken up to money missing out of my account which i did get back but still i don't really trust a lot of these business i just don't trust a lot of things when it comes to my money so we were out one time at the bar okay we're sitting at the bar and i had to give my credit card for open tab now mind you i wanted some wings and a couple of drinks now i've been to this bar several times they know me or whatever but it doesn't mean i trust you so when she did tally up my my tally i just told her to close it out because i had my drink and i had my wings now if i want another drink then i'm gonna just you know what i'm saying i'll say that so she tallied it out and while she did that and after she did that this is me I will go on my PayPal account, my Chime account, and my other account, and I will check and see how much you really did take out, because that's just me. So when I did that, I went in one account. I didn't need to go in three of them, because I only get used to one particular card that time. Went in my PayPal account. I look at it, 
And I, I want to make sure you took out that amount because I don't trust no fucking body. You sit next to me doesn't mean to look over my shoulder, okay, and look at my money. So that's what happened. She looked at my money amount, my balance, and was like, wow, I want to be like you when I grow up. Bitch, you already grown, okay? But let's not talk about my money because my money is not your money. My money is my money, okay? That's, that's what it is. It's my money and it's my money, not your money. It's my money, okay? That was one of my accounts. Now, I just left it at that. I really didn't reply to it. But it just seemed like from that point on, it was like a complaint, constant complaint about the amount of money that you make at your job, how you're broke. It was just a constant complaint about, well, I got to go out here and get this money. I got to go out here and do this. I got to go out here and do that because I got this bill to pay. I got to do that. I got to do that. That's fine. I understand. But I don't really want to hear your constant complaining about you not having no money because, honey, we're not going to take and use my money. That's not what we're going to do. Now, granted, when we would hang out, sometimes I, of course, pay for everything just because I'm that type of person. I'm your friend. And I just want to make sure that you are right. And that's just what I do. OK, if you want to do it in return, that's cool. I don't expect much. But I don't really like to hear a lot of complaints about nobody's money, especially if they didn't already known how much money you got, which wasn't in my attentions. Because, girl, when I'm looking at you tallying up my bill and I'm pulling my phone like this, I don't mean for you to look over my shoulder. OK, so. That's that just that's not what you do. But anyway, that's what happened. And it just seemed like from that point on, it was like a constant um, conversation about what you don't have, what you don't have, what you don't have. Now, listen, I'm all for helping anybody out because that's what we do as a human being. Everybody need help in life. I don't give a fuck if you rich, born rich. Everybody need help in life. But here's the thing. Don't count on me to do it all the time for you. OK, I don't always want to. Listen, just don't count on me to do it all the time for you. Now, here's one thing. You do have a job. She did have a job, but it just wasn't making ends meet. So she did do things on the side to make ends meet, you know, Uber and stuff like that. But I don't really want to hear a sob story about it all the time because, girl, listen, I, too, had to get somewhere in life. I, too, was broke at a time, okay? I, too, was on welfare at a time. And I, too, was getting food stamps and Section 8 and all of those things to help me grow as a person and further on in my life, which I did, okay? Girl, don't ask me, do I miss the food stamps right now? Because I would definitely tell you, hell yeah, shit. I wish a motherfucker would send me some goddamn food stamps because a girl would definitely be running around the grocery store on the back of the shopping cart with my legs out swinging. Yes, hallelujah. Okay, I would be real happy. Okay, especially with the prices of groceries today, but that's not this here now. That's not here or there, but it ain't about me. But I'm telling you, if you want to send me some food stamps, I would surely love them. Okay, but here's the thing. We're not about to sit here and complain all the time. It's draining. It's one thing when you try to help a person out, but honey, girl, penguin, you real nice to fill out a job application because a job application takes time and effort and work and to make a resume takes time and effort and work. Y'all already know that I had a job, what was it, in March when I was working at Adelante with my daughter, okay? And I was preparing to work from home, but what did I do? I ended up leaving the job after like a week and a half because they wasn't paying enough, $17. I'm not about to sit on the phone for you eight hours a day for $17 an hour, no honey. There was too much to be done for too little pay, in my opinion, okay? That that just wasn't cutting it. Now, granted, I wasn't going broke, but I just wanted extra money. I wanted extra money to save. That's what I wanted the money for. It didn't work out for me. I can't do it. However, I still do have other streams of income that I have coming in. Now, yeah, I do complain sometimes. I complain about my stomach. Sometimes I complain about money too, but I don't rely on another grown folk to do for me, what I can do for myself. It's one thing to help a person, but if you want to constantly help somebody over and over and over again, and they're not helping themselves, girl, listen, it is challenging and it's not really worth it. I could see if it was like a toddler and a kid in school, but even then, when you chill, when your child gets a certain age, they need to step up to the plate. And I'm not saying they need to step up to the plate and provide and pay bills, but they need to learn their assignments in school. They need to learn what they're supposed to do in the house. They need to learn their child responsibilities abilities, their chores. If you are constantly telling them the same thing over and over and over again, that means they're not paying attention. Same thing with an adult. If I have to constantly tell you the same thing over and over again, you're not paying attention, but also you really don't want much for yourself. How the fuck you gonna keep complaining about some shit and you really not trying to get yourself out of that rut? That means you really don't give a fuck and you really expect everybody to hand you certain things on a platter. Just like with Simone's family. She complained that her family don't help her out with the bills. They don't help her um, with things. Girl, listen, I don't know about you, but I'm not, I'm not about to be wanting to pay other grown folks bills. That's just not what I wanna do, okay? Now, trust me when I tell you I have indeed helped my daughter-in-law and my son out with bills before, okay? I've helped them. But this is not a thing that I want to do all the time. Do look forward to my payback, which I have gotten from my daughter-in-law 
we're not gonna talk about my son because he's that's not even yeah we're not talking about him no more when you're in your 40s your late 40s I, if she could be 50 i don't know they said they've been childhood friends for 40 years i don't know they might have met when they was two i really don't know so either way when you're in your 40s your mother is probably like 60 70 years old or 80 who knows but what do you expect her to do? She's an elderly lady. What do you expect your family to do for you or your friends if you ain't doing it for yourself? We all complain, and I get that. We are entitled to complain. It all depends on what you're complaining about. But if you're constantly complaining but you're not doing nothing to fuck about it, then the first thing that I would have to tell you is the STFU. Shut the fuck up, okay? Because if you're going to keep complaining and you're not doing nothing about it, then STFU all day, every day. I don't want to hear no more. How do you tell a friend that you love and care for, that she complains too much and she's not doing nothing? You just got to tell her. Sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Tough love is a motherfucker, but sometimes it's needed for people. And I think like with certain people that just haven't gotten it there yet and are not really doing anything about it but you constantly helping them you just really can't be so nice to tell them what to do anymore it comes a time when you just need to really have to say what you have to say blunt stern foot down and mean what the fuck you say and don't worry about the consequences because if she get mad she get the fuck mad she gonna get the fuck over it okay but what she not gonna keep doing is reaching in your pocket you a real good friend penguin because penguin did say i have given her money before and i don't expect her to pay it back because we girls we sisters whatever that's what we do you real nice okay and i you know what i would be too as well if that was my friend who was really really cool with me and close i too would do that However, I'm not going to keep doing it for you because that is what you expected now. You know, you could do something for someone that's really nice. You could do it for them twice. You could even do it for three times. But after like the third time, they start to feel expecting of it. If that's them as a person lazy and not wanting to do things. If you notice certain signs about a person like they're lazy, they don't want to do shit. They constantly complaining, but they're not doing anything to make it better. Then girl, that's them as a person. You can't sit there and sweet sugar talk them. You can't sit there and be like, well, Simone, you know, let me help you find a job let me fill out your application let me look for you let me set up your interview let me fix your resume up let me do that for you girl look please if she constantly complain about look girl i don't already helped you what you need to do is get up off of your ass and get it together welfare ain't gonna be there forever okay food stamps ain't gonna be there forever her daughter's what 15 or 16 years old girl look okay this little young lady who's 15 or 60 she gonna grow up she gonna get to be 18 or 19 or 20 or 21 whatever the cutoff age is for a family size up to okay and then you ain't gonna get no food stamps and you ain't gonna get no welfare okay god knows how much your um public housing rent is but if you ain't got no income you ain't got no job i'm pretty sure it's zero okay i'm pretty sure it's zero but who the fuck want to stay on zero rent i mean i'm pretty sure people would love to not have to pay rent or mortgage who the fuck wouldn't but let's be for real let's be responsible we got to grow up at a certain time in our lives like straight up we have to grow up everything in life is not for free like straight up and sometimes the free shit ain't worth the hassle you know what I'm saying? It's definitely not worth the hassle uh, being on food stamps and welfare because they want to know all your goddamn business. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm not trying to give them all my fucking business. Your bank accounts, how much money you got, what you do, who you fucking, your blood type. I ain't nobody about to give them it because they be asking all your motherfucking business. Okay. Now, also, she's upset because her baby father, Simone's baby father, he not contributing. Girl, if he ain't been contributing since that little girl was like two or three, like, penguin said they will make you think he gonna contribute now when he's 15 i'll be damned if i'm gonna sleep with somebody that hasn't contributed to my child's life in like over 13 years you got to be out your fucking mind there is no goddamn way dude you be lucky if you get a conversation from me you lucky if when i see you in the street i don't fucking run your ass over okay and complain that and complain that my brakes stop working you lucky that i don't see you and slap the shit out of you okay you lucky that when i see you i just don't walk past and act like you just some random stranger on the street and i don't fucking know you but there's no way that i'm gonna sleep with somebody who hasn't taken care of our child in 13 years do you really think that the cootie cat is that good that he's gonna start dishing out dollars honey if he ain't been dishing them out what make you think he gonna dish him out the fuck now i'm just saying there's no fucking way penguin some people you just gotta let them learn on their own and here's the thing her family ain't helping her out she complaining about her weight and all that shit honey the food stand's gonna run out the family gonna get tired of her you not gonna loan her no money no more and all she gonna be doing is stuck in that little public housing apartment with her food stamps and her daughter complaining about shit now how you gonna complain about a job that ain't paying enough when you don't even have a job and you don't even have money and you don't have no income coming in how you gonna complain about that shit like make it make sense i understand 
she's doing TikTok. She said she's doing TikTok random videos. Sweetheart, let me just say this because a lot of people feel like when you do social media, you rich, you got all of this money, you rolling in the dough and all that shit. It don't work like that. Okay. It definitely does not work like that. I've been on YouTube for almost 17 years. My daughter, Mumsy, will be 17 in August. And I, I started YouTube when she was either eight or nine months old. So I've almost been on YouTube 17 years. And I will tell you this, I have worked my way to this position. I have worked my way up to the status and it takes work. When I first started out on YouTube, there was no fucking wig reviewers. There was two. Okay. Which was, um, Atia and my girl love kisses 99 that was it okay so when i came on the scene for black women so and miss shonda so when i came on the scene it was only three or four of us at the time so of course i'm gonna get like exposure because there's only four of us of course i'm gonna go viral you know what i'm saying and that's what happened for me i got sponsors i got affiliates you know what i'm saying and i worked my ass off and it wasn't even that i wanted to make money off of youtube because it wasn't like that there weren't any ads there weren't any banners it was just youtube all for fun and i did this because i needed a hobby i wanted to reach out to people People and I wanted to talk to people. It wasn't about getting rich and making money for me. I already had a damn job as a senior VP for marketing and health insurance. I had me a job, baby. Okay. Had me a job. But the thing about it is I had to work my way. That didn't come to maybe like a couple years later when I, I was doing YouTube a couple of years later. That's when I started being able to get affiliate links. That's when I started being able to bring in money. Okay. That's when I was started being able to charge for things, charge for my services. That's what it, it took me a minute. OK. And then when I finally got to that point, I was I was still doing good, but I still had a job. I had a job and I also had my own website selling jewelry. OK, that I made and I purchased. All right. These are things that I accomplished. And then I also have my affiliate money. Trust me when I tell you, I am not one of those people who go through money. I will save money because I'm always paranoid about it. So here I am now. This is my third channel. My first one was hacked. The second one was taken from me. Third channel. And I have saved money over these years. I save money. I save money. So my views may not be all that like they used to be because there's so many saturated videos on YouTube. But tell me, trust me, I save money. That's I'm able to be able to still bring in income, but I also have money saved. All right. So. Like she said, she want to be like me when she grow up. Okay, honey, you got to you gotta do your own thing. You got to do what's best for you. And I get it. People want to do all these social media things like TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, whatever. It You don't blow up overnight. You don't. You don't accumulate money overnight. And maybe you can, depending on who you know. But this, this whole business is saturated. You just got to do what works for you. And I just wouldn't sit there and put all my eggs in a basket over social media and TikTok. I just wouldn't do that. Like you have to have other streams of income. And if you ain't got none and you ain't even trying to get a job, then there's no reason for you to complain about not having no money, Simone. So Penguin, what I would do is I would stop loaning her money. And the next time she fucking complains to you about a goddamn job or no money, then you need to bring up the fact that how you helped her out on numerous occasions by doing her resume and her application and so forth. And let her know. It is what it is. You're going to put your foot down. You're going to be stern. You're going to mean what you mean. You ain't got to cuss her, but you're going to mean what you mean. She might get mad about it, but sometimes tough love is a good love. And that's what you need to get. I don't know about y'all, but I'm not going to keep handing out people shit and helping people that ain't trying to help themselves because that's lessening what the fuck I got. And I'm not trying to lose out on a person who's not really trying to help themselves. Now, if I lose out on something and you've been helping yourself, then that's a prize and that's accomplished for me to see you glow. But if you ain't trying to glow and you still trying to be dusty, then bitch, I guess I'm just going to leave you in the dust and I'm going to keep on, you know what I'm saying, leveling up. And if you don't want to level up with me, then girl, I don't know what to tell you. But after a while, it's going to be like enough is enough. And that's all I can tell you. You don't have to be stern and let Simone know exactly what it is. She over 40. She can handle it. And if she can't, then I guess she's going to stay in that public housing apartment with her daughter, keep fucking her baby father and not getting no ends and being a big bag. Period. So the next Real Talk girl, let's get into it. We have one more before the day is done. And this one was crazy. Like, I was like, oh my God, what do I say about this? But then you know what? It, it just come from the heart. So I'm gonna just tell you what I would feel about the situation. Cause sometimes y'all women do complain about shit. Sometimes y'all complain about too much shit. Sometimes y'all complain about unnecessary shit. Y'all complain about shit and don't see the end results. And that's, that's kind of fucked up. You know what I'm saying? So let's, let's get into this one. Why do men do this? This is what she said. Why do men do this? I don't really understand the subject because it doesn't really go with the actual email itself. So, you know, 
anyway. Hey girl, hey, how are you doing? Thank you so much for being so transparent in your real talks and life. I don't know about anyone else, but I thank you because a lot of people are not and try to make it appear like they have lived a lavish life and it's all gravy. My name is Kenyana. I hope I say her name right. My name is Kenyana and I am a 35 year old black woman, recently divorced and loving my newfound life. So recently I met up with a gentleman. He was such a gentleman, meaning took me out, paid for our date, opened doors, every eat, everything. I actually met him while out grocery shopping. So we have been dating for some months. He brought me to meet his family, which was so nice and welcoming to me. Now here's the kicker, April. We became intimate after a couple of months of dating. I made him wait. Yes, I did. Cause you cannot get these goodies on no first date or dates. It was about three months into dating when I finally had the urge to give in to him. He was such a gentleman. We went away for the weekend. He and I, we went to the beaches and he rented an Airbnb for us. Of course, I was prepared and ready. When I got out the shower during our weekend getaway, this man had rose petals spread out onto the floor, wine waiting and smooth, soothing music playing. I was so impressed. No one has never treated me like this ever. Long story short, when we got ready to get into it, April, it wasn't what I was expecting. He was great with his mouth, but his man part, OMG girl, it was not the size I was expecting. I had to play it off as if it was amazing. Meanwhile, it was small. I just wasn't satisfied at all. He spoke dirty to me in bed, which was a turn on, but his size wasn't matching his dirty tone. I never said anything to him about it. He thought that I was satisfied. We still have remained in touch and have gone out several times since. He has even spent the night and weekend at my home. And yes, we have had sex several times. But girl, his penis isn't cutting it for me. What can I do? Like, he's such a gentleman. He has a great job as an engineer, has his own place, which I have spent the weekend at also. He's such a sweetheart. My question to you is, would you settle for a small dick in order to be happy in a happy relationship? Thank you, Kenyana. Girl, I'm starving right now. My stomach is so hungry. And first of all, I do apologize if I am mispronouncing your name, Kenyana, but I, I do apologize. Now, Kenyana is divorced in her, what did she say? Kenyana is 35 years old, black woman, recently divorced, and she is loving her single life, basically, her newfound life, okay? So she's been recently um, dating. She's been dating this man. She says he's a gentleman. Uh, they met at the grocery store. He opens doors for her, takes her out, introduced her to his family. Everybody's so kind and nice to her. Basically, she says no one has ever treated her like this ever in her life. Funny thing is she's already been married, okay? So I don't know. Maybe her husband wasn't thinking of her in that way, wasn't treating her in that way. Maybe that's why they got divorced, okay? We never know. But she loves the way he's been treating her. He's such a sweetheart. He has a good job. He's an engineer. Okay. He has his own place. She spent the weekend. He's just a really great guy. But the only thing that's not adding up for her or matching up for her is his man part. It's not the size that she expects it to be. But she's happy with the relationship. But she wants to know what I, what, what was her exact words? Okay. Hold up. My question to you is, would you settle for a small in order to be happy in a relationship, in a happy relationship. I really don't like to complain about that part, man part thing right there because it would be one thing if he was a bum, he was a dog, he was ugly, he had shit, and he had nothing right there. Then, girl, what is you? What are you with him for? But he got a job, he got his own place, his family like you. You just said that no one has ever treated you like that before in your life. So sometimes you got to sacrifice certain things just to be happy and that's in everyday life in general okay it is what it is now i'm not saying yeah brave for little dicks but i'm just saying not everybody is perfect all right i'm certainly not perfect i have my own flaws maybe he knows that his flaws are down there but like she said he great with the mouth okay good men sometimes are really hard to find and being in a happy relationship sometimes is hard to find also you already left a marriage and god knows why you left the marriage but i'm pretty sure you guys weren't happily happily blissed to, to the point where you decide i'm gonna just divorce my husband because he makes me so motherfucking happy i'm pretty sure it wasn't because of that i'm pretty sure you both had your flaws y'all had your difficulties y'all had your disagreements that's the reason why you got divorced okay it's un being unhappy there's no reason why people get divorced unless they're happy period okay so now you met this man at the grocery store and he does everything for you he opens doors he takes you out he treats you like a queen he treats you like no one has ever treated you before and you said you're happy but you want to know if i would settle for somebody with a small dick because the rest of him is perfect hell yeah i would okay i've been there done that okay i'm 50 years old 
girl, I don't care about that shit no more. And if you're 35, I don't really think that it's that important. Sex is not every fucking thing. Some people fail to realize it. Yeah, it is a part of a relationship, but there are other ways that you can satisfy one another. It don't always got to be that great. Maybe you can teach him to how to hit this spot and how to hit that spot. You just said he was great with his mouth. So girl, get used to that and go with the flow. But if you are liking him and you're feeling him and you are enjoying his um, companionship and company, then girl, go for it. Stop allowing certain things, body parts, to make the final decision in what you want in a relationship. You understand what I'm saying? We all have flaws with ourselves. It could be just about anything. It could be our head shape, our balding head, our, our thin lips, our, our, I don't know. Nobody is perfect. Not everybody has to have a gigantic this, okay? Because sometimes that gigantic that is not the way to go. Sometimes the just right size is perfect. But let's not use the this size to be the final decision in if we want to be in a relationship. You mean to tell me, Kenyana, everything about him is perfect. You just say he's a sweetheart. He's amazing. He's never treated, nobody's ever treated you like this. So everything about him is perfect except for that. Where does it say anywhere written down that it has to be a certain size? I'm just trying to figure that out. Like, does it say anything in anybody's book that says this has to be a certain size in order to be perfect? Like, I'm just saying, is it... You guys are in your 30s. I don't know how old he is, but she's 35. But you already been with a man. He already just had you divorce him. You, you guys are divorced, okay? It's time to move on. Sometimes you gotta mature. That size thing is not everything when you get to be a certain age. If it's about respect, it's about respect, loyalty, love, and how the person treats you. You just said that he treats you so good, better than anybody has ever treated you. Girl, if that's what he's doing good for you, then stick with it. What would I do? I wouldn't even worry about his peen size, okay? I wouldn't. I would worry about how he treats me as a person. And maybe even so his family. I don't really give two fucks too much about how his family treats me because I'm not gonna marry you. I'm not gonna be with you. I'm not gonna live with you. I'm not in a relationship with you. So I really don't give two shits about how somebody family treat me, okay? As long as you don't disrespect me in my face, then we cool. You can talk about me all you want behind my back, but just don't let that shit get the fuck back to me. But it's about you and him, all right? Did he ever say to you, oh, well, your titties too small, or your titties too big, or your cootie cat stink, or you know what I'm saying? Listen, we have to stop using body parts as the final decision of who we wanna be with. Cause that shit is not cool. It's not cute. We are born the way we born and that's just what it is. If he make you feel happy in all the other aspects, then girl, stop with that. Stop with worrying about five minutes of sex, 10 minutes of sex, stop. Because it really doesn't make the person, all right? It honestly really does not make the person. Now, yeah, there are other ways to go around satisfying one another, but as long as your mind and heart are satisfied, then that's what will satisfy the rest of you and the relationship. So Kenyana, me personally, I would definitely still be with him. I would definitely still go further with my relationship and I wouldn't worry about such a minute, minor thing, which is a peen size. Like, listen, let me tell you something. Somebody could have the best peen in the world and be a true dick asshole, okay? Trust me when I tell you. Ah, uh, yeah, trust me. Let's not base our relationship on somebody's peen size, ass size, titty size, cootie size. Let's not do that. Let's not do it with the looks. Like attraction is number one when you see somebody. But after the attraction, you got to think further. You got to think more than that. Like, listen, let me tell y'all something. You know, I've been single for four years and I love my life. Like she says, I love it. And I've been single for many reasons. For one, you know, my son passed away. So even though it's almost five years, I just really don't feel like I can give my wholeheartedly heart to anyone. But also I've been through enough in my life to where I'm good right now. I don't, I'm not really in no desperate need of being in no relationship with nobody. Three, you have to come correct when I, when you come to me. Like you're not about to come to me and be broke. No bum ass nigga, okay? All right, none of that shit. Now you might be ugly, but I mean, yeah, I'm not going to, it's about attraction, but let's just say you're not about to come to me broke, all right? You're not about to have no baggage, like no bullshit. You're just not going to have no bullshit with you. You will have to come correct, and that's how I'm going to sum it up, okay? I have a lot of qualifications, and you know what I'm saying? If you can't meet them, then I don't know what the fuck to tell you. But I think with Kenyana, his qualifications are great, except for that one thing. Girl, that ain't a qualification. A peen size is not a qualification in being with somebody. It definitely isn't. Now, if his hygiene was bad, then it's definitely like, listen, dude, you might want to fix that. You might want to go brush your motherfucking teeth. You might want to wash your balls and your ass, okay? But if he doesn't correct that, then girl, then it's time for you to step. But a peen size is not a justification in, oh yeah, I want to be with this dude because he got a good peen size, but he, he and he got a he is a man oh yeah girl i want to be with this dude because he got a good peen size but he's a dickhead like girl no 
Let's take that out of the equation and worry about the most important things, which is respect, loyalty, how he is treating you. Now, if you're happy with this man and he has blessed you and his family has blessed you and he treats you like no one has ever treated you before, even your husband, because y'all got a divorce. Because I'm pretty sure if your husband was doing every, all of this, you wouldn't got a divorce. So if he is all of those things and then some, then girl, stop worrying about the things that just don't matter like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? What if he got hit by a car and he became paralyzed? Then what the fuck you going to do? Leave him? Like, let's just be for real. Women, some women marry men who are paralyzed from the waist down. And these men are amazing men to them. They ain't thinking about that shit. Let's stop being self-absorbed. Let's stop being self-centered. And let's stop being selfish and think about what is really important. Because it ain't always sex. It really, really ain't. That shit will last you five minutes if you're lucky. Sometimes even more. But the shit is is, is temporary. It's not going to be a permanent thing where you're going to be laid up 24 hours, seven days a week. Because then if that's the case, girl, what the fuck are you going to do with your life? You know what I'm saying? Kenyana, let's grow up. You're 35 years old. There are more things important in a relationship versus that. And that's how I feel about it. And what would I do? Like I said, I would still continue to date him. That's not really a big thing. And please don't bring it up to him like yeah you got a little dick that's not nice either okay that's definitely not nice either don't say that okay there are other ways to work around that like yeah hit it right there okay move to the you know what i'm saying but just let's not talk about his peen size especially to him okay get off your ass get out of get, get your head out the clouds get your head out the fucking clouds and realize that that is not the most important thing in nobody's relationship period i didn't really want to spend too much time talking about that because i just really don't feel like it's that important you know what i'm saying like i mean maybe some people do listen i am 50 years old i have five kids i've been there done that like you know what i'm saying and it's not important it's really really not important because it's not going to make the person any better than what they are it's not going to break them that is not an importance what importance to me is that you don't come to me with no bullshit okay life is short and when you find somebody that's great and is loving on you and they making you happy then why should that even matter that should be the least of your problems and thoughts like straight up like that's just me in a nutshell you know what i'm saying like i i can't explain any more than that's how i feel about it you know what i'm saying like it's not that important but I would love to find somebody when I'm ready that will treat me like no other. And if that is an issue, it's not going to be an issue because I'm not going to make it into an issue. You know what I'm saying? Everybody wants companionship. Everybody wants to be loved. Let's not make the minor silly things important versus what's really important. Because like I said, you can have some good peen and a lousy ass attitude. Okay. So you guys on that note, I love you all. Make sure you wish me a happy birthday in the comments. Make sure you check out Floor Your Hair on Amazon. I will link it down below. I am so hungry, you guys. Like I'm starving. Like I'm really, really hungry. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to get into making myself something to eat. I love y'all. Stay diva and divalicious. Make sure you check me out on the I don't know. Just, just make sure you check it out. Okay. I love y'all. Stay deep and delicious. And I will see y'all in the comments.